Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the first episode of the Trilogy Talks. I can't do it as well as the intro, so we're gonna actually let that go. Uh, the Trilogy, Trilogy Talks. Talks. Yeah, and uh, that took me a long time to make and edit, so I'm actually gonna play it again. Uh, the Trilogy, Trilogy Talks. Talks. Yeah, anyway, so now um, to get right into the video. The Trilogy, Trilogy Talks. Talks. Okay, um, yeah, sorry, so I... Didn't mean for that to happen. Um, but to get right into the video today, we're gonna- <laughs> Okay, it was funny once, don't do it again. Okay. Um, to get right into the video, sorry, that was a little aggressive. Um, we're gonna be talking about one of the greatest trilogies of all time, I'm kidding. But, uh, this trilogy is very near and dear to my heart. I wanted to start this series off talking about a trilogy that really forged me as a human being. It was, uh, a very, very massive part of my childhood. Um, I'm talking about the Cars trilogy. When you're thinking about great movie trilogies and you're thinking about um, film and cinema, this might not be one of the best trilogies that comes to mind. And um, this trilogy obviously is not perfect for obvious reasons. It's a good film, okay? I'm tired of pretending like it's not. If this movie was made with human beings, it would be great and we all would love it. But it was with Cars and there was really weird things and a lot of logic cool things that happen in this movie is really something that Disney should have really explained more because there's so much lore behind Cars 2 that I really hate and they never address any of it. For one, um, boats exist and they are stuck to the confines of water. That has to suck because from my understanding, all of the cool things that, you know, cars have to enjoy are on the streets, on land. I, they didn't show any, like, cool boat places, you know? And um, that boat's job is just to give people rides to the middle of the ocean and nowhere and back. And then another thing is there's a plane, living planes, and cars are just inside of them. And they don't explain, like, is that their organs? I am concerned for Cars 2, not the point. I'm gonna actually get to the point of the video now. Sorry, I got a little off topic. Cars 2 introduces so much interesting stuff to the lore of Cars, and then they just never address it again. And I kind of love it because a lot of the stuff that happens in Cars 2 just does not get addressed again. And it really does feel like a fever dream. And you can kind of tell that the person who created Cars 2 was kind of like, okay, let's, let's ignore that. That happened and just get to the end. Um, but this movie uh, trilogy was very, very important to me growing up. I was a very huge Cars fan growing up. I had a giant poster of it over my uh, bed, kind of like how now Marvel's a big part of my life. So I have a giant poster of Marvel over my bed. In fact, I'll show a flashback of the Cars banner that I used to have over my bed. Um, wow. I was a wee little lad back then. Um, but uh, Cars, like I said, was very, very important to me growing up. The first movie, we're going to start off talking about the first movie here. Um, a very solid movie, a very classic Pixar movie. If you're thinking about the OG classic Pixar movies, the nostalgic ones, this one should definitely be up there with Monsters, Inc. Um, what was the other ones I was thinking about? Toy Story, stuff like that, The Incredibles. Um, very, very good movie. It's solid. It's not anything spectacular. It's not anything revolutionary or life-changing, but um, it's a very cute movie. There's a lot of funny aspects of it. Um, if this movie was made a live action and, um, they had people instead of cars, it would literally be any given Hallmark movie ever. A, uh, very overconfident celebrity goes and gets broken down into a small town in the middle of nowhere, has to ask for help, falls in love, and then continues doing the thing that they were doing that, you know, that made them famous. But now with the newfound love and family that they made while they were stuck in this small town, um, it literally is basically any Hallmark love story. Um, it's good though. I love it. And then I love the transition. They go from nice little feel-good NASCAR racing movie to James Bond. And let's add spies and have them kill people. And the villain is actually going to have a really deep motive and hatred because he's a lemon and he always has to get oil changes and all these different things. And it's embarrassing to be him. So he's going to make this cool fuel and then purposely start killing people. Whose idea was it? I don't know, but it's fucking brilliant. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. Cars 2 was so interesting. The mystery of who the big bad was was cool. All of the different spy stuff that happened in that movie was great. Should it have been a part of this trilogy? Absolutely the frick not. They should have made it its own movie. They should have had its own characters. Um, and they probably should have just made it a spinoff, which is basically how it ended up being treated. Um, and that's something that I want to talk about. Uh, when it comes to a trilogy, the linear, not the linear, the storyline that goes through all three of the movies, if you're trying to think of a trilogy 
as a three act story um it should all kind of flow relatively well that's something that kind of knocks off the cards trilogy for me uh it's a very good trilogy it's very enjoyable each of the movies on their own it's very fun to watch very um enjoyable but like i said second movie kind of goes completely off the rails and then um cars 3 just kind of takes place later in life it's kind of like the movie logan is for all the x-men movies that wolverine is in um where it's like okay now we're just gonna flash forward to later in life because we don't want to explain what's happened in between the last time we saw him we don't want to give an actual timeline as to what's happened since then um but now we're just getting towards the end of lightning mcqueen's racing career um we see the brothers who were his original sponsors retire not gonna lie watching that movie made me cry the first time i watched it and watching lightning mcqueen realize he's too old to do it but he has a young trainer who really deserves to be a good racer and him realizing it's not always about him is the perfect ending for his story arc i think that throughout the three movies that's at least the one thing that they have going for him is in the first movie he's an arrogant jerk he's still kind of an arrogant jerk by the end of the movie um the second movie he kind of attacks mater for not fully justified reasons like obviously mater deserves it a little bit but still lightning queen is kind of that jerk and then by the end of the movie lightning mcqueen is finally a good character and that i will say is a giant w for the cars trilogy but i do think that overall what prevents this trilogy from being a perfect trilogy is cars 2 being as off the rails as it is it's not a grounded film and um something that i like to say about um sequels if you are ever making a movie and you're making a sequel for the movie there's two things you can do you can either go more in depth or you can just go big and make it all out make the stakes absolutely high completely go off the rails with it and that's exactly what they did with cars 2 and uh they did a little too much obviously um if they just did the world grand prix storyline it probably would have been great it probably would have been a very interesting uh experience but uh since they tried to do a lot with the spy stuff as well and then make a big bad and then have people getting tortured in the big ben clock because they're tied to the gears very disturbing stuff for kids but um like I said, those are the movies that I grew up on. Those are the movies that forged me. They're really, really good. So if I was to give a rating for this trilogy as a whole, which is what this series is going to be me doing, is talking about the trilogy, um, addressing some pros for it, addressing some cons for it, and then giving it an overall rating. It's not a perfect trilogy, sadly. Cars 2 kind of depletes it from that um, tier of all tiers, which is the perfect trilogy. But um, I do think it is a solid trilogy. trilogy. The first movie and the third movie... Have a lot of similarities they do a great job closing off the story in the final um trilogy i mean the final movie of the trilogy um but with that being said i'm only going to give it a rating of an 82 out of 100 um it's a b minus it's not bad it's not great cars 2 if it was a solid movie and if cars 3 actually took stuff from cars 2 it probably would be a little higher up but that is my overall rating for this movie um thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this journey welcome to the first episode of the trilogy of chalks i hope you guys enjoyed it um i will see you guys next time peace out